Hey neighbor, welcome back to ARTV. My name is John, and it's time for a review of the sophomore album after the metaphorical death of the punk rock leaning band Creeper that have kind of overhauled their sound for sex death and the infinite void. So I've been a fan of Creeper since 2016. A viewer showed me their Stranger EP, I bought that on vinyl, and the rest is history. I was hooked on that early sound that blended like horror punk with also a lot of really bouncy, energetic hooks. Eternity in Your Arms, their proper debut album released in 2017, and it was one of my favorite albums of the year, of the decade actually, and it's still something that I can just so consistently come back to because it is enjoyable on every level. With that throttling sound supposedly taking the back seat as the band started to give interviews after teasing their comeback and finally delivering the lead single Born Cold, I found myself loving the hell out of that song, but not necessarily seeing the stylistic shift that they were talking about. Sex Death and the Infinite Void is a very American sounding record, and according to Will Gould, the lead vocalist and the rest of the band, it was intentionally crafted that way. Hannah Greenwood, their keyboardist and also, I guess at this point, kind of a co-lead vocalist, has a lot more duties on this record. She sings on more of the tracks and she works in backing vocals, and that was definitely apparent on Eternity in Your Arms, but really pushing it to the forefront this time around is that, but also these kind of subdued drum performances that have more in line with 50 soft rock and diner rock, as I'm going to dub it on a few of these tracks, than they do with the punk sound of album one. You're almost kind of left wondering where the firework might Moment is going to come in and explode on a significant amount of the track list, but it's also an album that requires patience. It got better and better the more time I spent with it, and while I don't think this is anything that's really comparable to the first album and what they accomplished there, it's still a very solid effort, but a solid effort in a year full of great releases, I hope this doesn't get lost in the mix. The best way that I can describe Sex, Death, and the Infinite Void to you is by relaying my own light bulb moment that I had with the record. Are Creeper an anthology band? Think of it like this, American Horror Story. Every year it's a new cast or maybe part of the same cast, but the tone and the story kind of changes, the faces, the characters are all different, but the overall feeling, I mean, it's still in the same universe. Creeper might be an anthology band, and they kill themselves off at the end of each cycle, only to be reborn again with, yes, the same cast, but a different sound. Let's just hope that if the anthology thing is true, that it doesn't go the route of American Horror Story, because I don't think too many people are going to disagree with me when I say that season one is the best by far. I don't want Creeper's album one to be the best forever. Guitars definitely steal the show throughout from me. I love the work from Ian Miles. I think that after coming back from the psychotic break, that he had, a little bit of time away in a hospital, just recovering, writing in therapy. This did a lot for his playing style, and it's not that it's always aggressive, there's just some great solos that do kind of break the album out of the rut that you feel it's about to fall into. If we're being honest with ourselves, we kind of have to give it up to Creeper just a little bit at the very least for being bold enough to tinker with their core sound and not necessarily alienate the fans, but definitely push it off to the point where you're like, okay, this is so different, I'm kind of having a hard time comprehending. They kept the theatricality intact, but it's still a very different maneuver that kind of leaves me wondering, would this have worked better as a play? I do find myself skipping over those interludes pretty much every single time. They're just really cheesy to me, and also on Thorns of Love, I think the speech about we're clipping Cupid's wings, I just, oh, it takes me out of the experience. It gets so annoying to me. Will's vocals on the record sound really nice and do kind of have a timeless feeling to them that bridges the gap between 50s, 60s, 70s rock and also modern stuff. And I think that Hannah was great as kind of a compliment to his voice, taking leads occasionally, but also doing some great backing vocals, the rest of the band really getting involved. I do think that it could have used some more energy, not necessarily just coming out and playing away on the drums or firing on the guitars and playing with a punk spirit, but more so just something to kind of vamp up and add a little bit of extra pizzazz to the track list. Imagine the long wait and suspense I was feeling after hearing the first two singles and not being able to listen to anything else because of my own two-song limit before a record for like six months. 
Those were Born Cold and Annabelle, and I actually love both tracks, with Born Cold being the superior in my eyes. I already mentioned loving the bombastic feeling of that tune. It just lands every single blow. It is over the top, but they finesse it in a way that really only Creeper could, and they pull it off so well. Annabelle also has kind of a nice punk energy to it, but they fuse their roots with an updated rock style, and I do like the allusions to heaven and hell that we start to get on these tracks. And while I don't think this is necessarily a concept album as a whole, there's definitely some loose ones that tie together. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, the middle section of Sex, Death, and the Infinite Void really starts to drag. I'm referring to the tracks Paradise, Poisoned Heart, and Thorns of Love. All three of those come back to back to back, and with Paradise opening that, I just don't feel that the track necessarily goes anywhere. It also has these borderline creepy lyrics that I understand are kind of coming from the POV of a character, but still, they're stalkerish and the track just never takes off. I feel that right after that on Poisoned Heart, that's probably the best of that section there, but still not necessarily anything that feels like it's picking the pace of the record back up. And then we drop back down into Thorns of Love, and I'm like, okay. Hey, Diner Rock, cool. Don't know that I necessarily wanted a doo-wop tune from Creeper, but it is what it is. We move into the more positives on tracks like Cyanide that absolutely have a flaming chorus. I think that track got better for me when I actually kind of turned off my expectations of what I wanted the new Creeper to sound like, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing and manifesting its new ideas and working its way into my own heart. Be My End definitely feels familiar, but it has a grip on me at this point. It's very catchy, but also well done. I feel that the track Napalm Girls kind of does go off like that atomic illusion that it's referring to, but at the same time, the way that Will just oversells the word violence, it's like a little much the more times I hear the song. Still pretty good stuff though. I can't deny that I like the guitars and the drums on that track, and it doesn't totally take me out of the experience. However, it has nothing on my top favorite on the entire record, Black Moon. Hang in there for the finishing move on that track because the guitar solo is definitely the ace up the sleeve, the cherry on top of the Sunday, and it's fantastic, very vintage sounding. But the rest of the track, I am fascinated by the lyrical content here. I love the fact that it talks about love and death, the central themes of the record, heaven, hell, a lot of religious imagery, but the way they portray it, it doesn't feel as cheesy as it did on a few of the other tracks, like really trying to shoehorn it in. Also, All My Friends is a touching ballad that closes this record. I know that More Careful With Your Heart is technically the last song, but not really. I skip over that and pretend that All My Friends is the last one. It was written for guitarist Ian Miles while he was in the hospital for his psychotic break, and you can really just feel the heartfelt emotion being poured into this song. It really starts to sizzle. They closed out album one with something similar, and this one, it does it almost even better. Creeper avoid the sophomore slump, but don't necessarily hand over a great album this time around, just a solid one that almost works better in sections than it does as a whole. There's some great tracks on here that you definitely need to cherry pick off. Check the description down below if you want to see my favorites, least favorites, want to stream the album for yourself, there's a link for that. Sex, Death, and the Infinite Void gets a 3.5 out of 5 from me. Don't forget to drop a like on this video if you want to see me continue reviewing smaller bands like this. Subscribe for the love of music. Check out my review of their first record here, another one right over here. Socials in the description. I'm talking really fast, and I'll see you soon for more on ARTV.